In this lesson, I'm going to explain how to use the 3D camera tool to control the ground plane. And that'll all make sense in just a moment. To follow along, go to Working Files and open up Photoshop Projects, and then open up Camera.psd. This document has multiple layers. We're going to work our way down through these guys here, starting off with this top one, this wine bottle. This is something I made from a preset here in Photoshop. Let's say I picked on this layer instead and go to the 3D panel, then I would check Mesh from Preset, and then go down here and click on Wine Bottle, and then click on Create, and that would create the wine bottle. The only thing is that it doesn't create a wine bottle with color in it. You have to add the color, so you select that layer, and you open up the 3D panel again, and you click on these various materials. So I can make the cork dark purple like that, and the glass here transparent, or mostly transparent. Then the label material, I've made it more like wine than the label, but that's just how it works here when you work with the materials. But we're not dealing with materials here, we're dealing with the 3D camera move tool. Let me close this down for just a moment here. What I want to do is I want to maneuver the ground plane. And the way you maneuver anything in 3D space is by switching over to the move tool right over there, the top left hand corner there. You can click on the move tool or just press V, the shortcut key, and that turns it on. And when you do that, it puts all these 3D things on the screen the secondary view here, the light up there, the ground plane down here and then the Move tool that allows you to control both the ground plane and the object itself. What we're going to do in this lesson is use the camera tool to control the ground plane. That sort of seems counterintuitive, right? The camera tool changes the position of the camera, but I think it's more intuitive to think of the camera tool as controlling the ground plane, the surface on which your objects reside. Of course, they don't have to reside on the ground plane, but the ground plane is how you adjust the overall look here. So let's just start working with that. As I move my cursor around here, I've got the Move tool selected. I've also got the camera tool selected. If I open up the 3D panel, you'll see what I mean. Right now it says label material, but if I click someplace else like that, it changes to current view and has a little camera icon. That means you now have the camera selected and you can now maneuver the camera to adjust the ground plane. If I click one more time, it says environment, but in fact the camera is still selected. If I switch back and forth between environment and current view, it just changes the properties that are displayed over here. Here are the current view properties, and then click again, and here are the environment properties. Either way, I'm controlling the camera. Now I've got five camera control tools, which are the same kind of control tools when you control a 3D object. And they're right up here. I'm gonna talk about them here right to left. Some of the names are confusing, but you'll see how they work in a moment. If I click on this first one, that's scale. Take a look at it, you can see that it gets smaller and larger. If I use scale, that means I'm moving the ground plane closer or farther from the viewer. So right now, if I go down here and start dragging, if I drag up, it drags the ground plane closer to you. If I drag down, it moves the ground plane farther away. I can't make it go left or right, just closer or farther. That's scale. So it's not really scale. It really is just moving the ground plane closer or farther. Notice that the little bottle here stays rested at that juncture, that intersection between the X axis here, the one that goes right to left, and the Z axis, the one that comes toward you and goes away from you. This 3D space is defined by X, Y, and Z axes. Here's the X axis here. The Z axis comes toward us and goes away from us. And then the Y axis, goes straight up and down. If you look at the top view here, we're looking at the top of the bottle. The y-axis just goes right down through the bottle or comes up at us from the bottle there. So the y-axis goes up here like that. Right now we're dealing with the Z line here as I move this back and forth like that. I can move the ground plane to the left for just a moment. I'll show you how that works. And then if I take this scale again, it does the same thing. It just moves the ground plane forward or backward like that. All right, now we've got the next two over here. This one's called slide. This one's called drag. So what's the difference between slide and drag? They seem like they're the same thing, right? Well, slide works mainly in the Z space. It moves things back and forth. I can go like that, and it looks just like using the scale tool, right? But I can also move them left to right. The one thing that the slide tool can't do is move them up and down. It can't take the ground plane and move it up and down. So I can move the ground plane left and right, back and forth with that slide tool. If I take the drag tool, I can now move it up and down. I'm moving the XY plane, the flat plane that's facing us. The XY plane is where all Photoshop documents reside, except for ones in 3D space, and that's the one that faces us like this, up and down, left and right, but I can't move it back and forth. I can't move it farther away or closer to me. I'm just moving the XY plane here. There you go. The two over here are kind of confusing. This one's called roll, and this one's called rotate. What's the difference? Roll rotates the ground plane, on a distant place, way off there in the distance. It's not necessarily the end of the z-axis, it's just the farthest place there in the back. It rolls it on that faraway place. So if I go like this, it rolls it over there. If I take the rotate tool, which I'll explain in a moment, but I'm gonna rotate the whole ground plane here. 
If I go back to roll, it's still going to roll in that distant place. It's always based on the current view. It's always that place off in the distance that you're rolling the entire ground plane. It's not on the z-axis per se. It's just on that distant point over there, straight back from the viewer. That's how the roll tool works. I'm going to move things away a little bit here just to show you how the rotate tool works. I'll take the drag tool, move it way over like that. The rotate tool rotates the ground plane at the center here, right here, not at the intersection of the X and Z axis, but right in the center of your view. So I take the rotate tool and start moving it like this. Notice that this is the area it's rotating around, the center of the screen, basically. It's a little confusing, kind of disconcerting as I move things around here, but it's rotating essentially around the center of the screen, kind of as a skew like that. That's how the rotate tool works. I can go up and down. So I'm rotating basically on a spot here, up and down, left and right, in a circular motion, clockwise, counterclockwise, as opposed to the roll tool, like this, which rolls off of this distant point there. Wherever the current ground plane location is, it's always that distant point that it's rotating around or rolling around like that. And it is a little counterintuitive, too, if you have the roll tool and you put it up here. It's always going to roll in the direction that you pull it. If I pull it left, it rolls like that. Pull it right, it rolls like this. If I put my roll tool up here and go left, it's going to rotate the opposite direction it's always relative to the direction you move if it were down here. So it's more intuitive to take the roll tool and kind of put it down here like that. These guys are just a little confusing because the motion is usually relative to where the current location of the ground plane is, not necessarily where it started. So again, let's kind of reset everything. Go back to history here, start all over again, opening up like so. Get the move tool here. I'm going to take rotation now, and it's going to rotate basically around the center of the ground plane like so. There you go. I slide it off to the left a little bit here using the slide tool. Rotate again with the rotation tool. It rotates around there. Again, kind of around the center of the frame. That's why the bottle is moving around the center point like that. Now, if I want to move from one move tool to another, I can use a keyboard shortcut. Just press V multiple times and it cycles through them all. Here we've got the rotate tool, and now the roll, and now the drag, and now the slide, and now the scale. And if I press the V again, starts over again. Now, if when you press V more than once and it doesn't cycle through these tools, that's because you didn't change preferences, as I suggested earlier in this course. To check that, just go to Edit Preferences or on a Mac, go to Photoshop Preferences. Go down here to Preferences. Check out the General. And then uncheck the Use Shift key for Tool Switch. If you have that checked, then if you want to cycle through these tools, you hold on the shift and then press V to cycle through them. But I think it's easier to turn that shift thing off and just have the V tool cycle through them like so. All right, that's how you use the 3D camera to adjust the ground plane. But what's the purpose of doing this thing? It's primarily to align the objects over a background to make them look like they fit into the background. So let's just take a look at an easy background here like this gradient. Now, how do we fit this one in the gradient? Well, the gradient really is a 2D object. It doesn't really have 3D perspective, but it sort of feels like it has 3D perspective. So let's just move this guy around a little bit and see if we can get it to sort of look like it would look if we wanted to put it inside the space. Pull the ground plane down a little bit by scaling it like so. So I can bring the bottle down like that. I can move it in the Z space here, like pulling it toward me like this. Move it in XY space by pulling it down. And you can decide how it fits. Notice it's tipped a little bit to the left. Take the roll tool and kind of just tip it a little bit to the right, like so. And if I find I'm not getting it exactly the way I want it, I can use numeric values. I switch to the current view here. I go over to this little coordinates button, and I can adjust the Z value, for example, here to adjust that roll or that rotation. All right, that's one way to deal with the background. Let's take a look at a realistic background here, this place setting. This place setting started its life as a 2D object that I switched into a 3D postcard. So basically, it's a 2D thing floating around in 3D space that I tilted away from the viewer. Now I want to position the bottle on that surface. So I go back to the bottle and make it active like that. And we take the Move tool. Maybe we want to push it back a little bit. So to push it back, we take the Slide tool and push it back, like so. Which also makes it look like it gets smaller, right? If we scale it, it just seems like it just pulls it toward us, right? So that's kind of the strange thing about scale versus slide. Nevertheless, we can go back over here, move it in XY space like that. I might need to rotate it toward me a little bit, so I click on the Rotate tool and kind of pull it toward me by going down below it and tipping it toward me a little bit. Just kind of a guess here. There is a way to adjust the perspective before I place an object in the scene using the Vanishing Point filter. We'll do that in another exercise. So here's just kind of eyeballing it. All right, now you notice that when I do this, I get this kind of modeled look to the shadow. That's because Photoshop does not fully update the view because it takes so much time to fully update it. This is basically a draft view of the 3D. If 
you want to improve the view just to kind of get a better feel for how things are going to look, you can just render on the fly here. That's this button here at the bottom of the Properties panel. Click on that. It does a little render like this. You can let it pass by a number of times to improve the render, but you can stop at any time by just clicking at any point. It's like that. It turns it off. Now you can see the shadow looking much better there. All right, let's move on down the line here to a couple more things. Got this horse in this background. Turn off the wine bottle. The horse is a 3D model that I downloaded from the internet. It's an OBJ file. That's a file extension that was created by a company called Wavefront. It's now kind of a standardized 3D extension. I downloaded it from a website where it was offered for free with no need to attribute the website, but I want to do that anyway. So let's take a look at that little website. The model was created by Lyndon Daniels, and this is that person's website with those two models on it. All we did was download it. And here it says basically, welcome to the site. And if you want to use the model, feel free. And if you want to give me some attribution, that's fine. Otherwise, you don't have to. But if you want to go get this horse or this cow, you can always come to this website to get it. Although we are providing the horse file with the assets here in this course. So let's go back to Photoshop. The background photo was provided by Photospin, the stock photo agency that we've been working with. Let's just position the horse there. So I can click on the horse to make it active. It turns on all these various things here. We got the move tool selected. I want to position the ground plane relative to the ground there, and the ground kind of slopes down to the right. So let's just do that by using the roll tool to roll it like so. I've got the horse selected now. You can tell the horse is selected because that widget is showing up, and you've got this dark gray area around it. And if I hover over it, it turns yellow. So to deselect the horse, I can just click away from it. Now I've got the camera selected, and we'll roll the scene a little bit like so. I want to kind of push it back a bit, kind of scale it down. Either one works. I can use scale to push it back. Or I can use the slide tool, same kind of thing. One thing about the slide tool is that's a little more intuitive because when you push up, it goes back. You pull it towards you, it comes towards you. Whereas the scale works the opposite direction. If I go up, it pulls it toward me, and down it goes away. Either way. Now I want to rotate the ground plane. Now I could rotate the object individually, but I'd rather rotate the ground plane just to show you how that works. So let's go to rotate here. Kind of turn it around like so, keeping it at the same angle as before. And perhaps I want to slide it up like this a little bit. I want to move it along the flat plane, not up and down. So I click on the slide tool and slide it like that. I want to now move it in the XY plane. So I can click on this and drag it up like so. Still kind of large, right? We can scale it down a little bit again. I think we've got it positioned pretty well, relatively speaking. We've got them fitting the ground plane there nicely. You can always adjust the lighting to make it a little bit less harsh and also kind of adjust the position of the shadow if you want to. And we'll deal with that in future lessons, but I will just show you briefly how that works here. I click on the light, turns on this controller, and I can move the shadow around like so, illuminating this side of the horse as well. So that is how you use the 3D camera tool to adjust the ground plane.